back live in Madison Square Garden for the tale of the tape between Felix Trinidad and Brunel Whitaker. And you can see Trinidad's advantages in age, in height, and in reach. But making weight was a struggle for the Puerto Rican star, who was reportedly five pounds over the day before the weigh-in and spent the last hour or so before weighing in late, running with sweatshirts on in the streets of Manhattan to get his weight down. Tonight, they both come in at 155. Punch that numbers, Larry. Take a look and see how active they are. We can see that Trinidad throws more punches, but remember that Whitaker is so good in defense that an opponent's numbers are meaningless against him. Same thing with the jabs. Trinidad can jab, and he can hurt you with either hand. And rules of the bout with the most honest scorer in boxing, our ringside man, Harold Letterman. The Felix Trinidad Pernell Whitaker fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. Jim, the important thing to remember tonight is you got a short fighter against the tall fighter. Whenever you get a short fighter against the tall guy, very often you get headbutts. So if a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards. If the four rounds have been completed before that, it's a technical draw. Back to you, Jim. Brunel Whitaker's last prize fight took place on the night of October 17, 1997. That was the last time Ike Quarte had fought prior to his appearance last week against Del Oya. So the 490-day layoff, by far the longest of Whitaker's career. He began his professional career here in Madison Square Garden, November 15, 1984, after having won his gold medal at the LA Olympics in that first fight here that night. He knocked out a fighter named Farron Como in the second round. Sweet pea. Cut it up, cut it up. Cut it up, baby. With his left hand on Whitaker's shoulder there, former Olympic teammate and former world welterweight champion, Mark Breland, long departed from the sport as an active participant. Sweet P. Whitaker loves to say, I've never lost a fight. His professional record, 40 wins, both losses by decision to Jose Luis Ramirez and Oscar De La Hoya, hotly disputed by Whitaker's camp. The draw against Julio Cesar Chavez was clearly no draw. He certainly deserved a win that night. Again, Burnell loves to say, I've never lost a prize fight. And the opponent is a man who never has lost a professional prize fight, officially or unofficially. contingent in the crowd here at Madison Square Garden should provide what amounts to a home court advantage for Felix Trinidad. Earlier tonight, junior welterweight champion Vince Phillips lost his title to a relatively unknown fighter named Teron Millette from St. Louis. And you can attribute that loss to the fact that he had to take off massive amounts of weight to make 140 pounds. 47 pounds he took off in seven weeks. Trinidad has also had serious weight problems. He should really be a junior middleweight. But he is 10 years younger than Phillips. And when you're young and strong, you can get away with these things. Felix Trinidad has a record that underlines his reputation as an explosive puncher. 33 wins, 29 of them by KO, 12 knockouts in his 13 title fights. Only Hector Camacho went the distance with him in a title fight. Camacho, of course, did the same thing with Oscar De La Hoya. And now let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and 
gentlemen, from the most famous sports address in the Big Apple, New York City, Madison Square Garden, Don King Productions, along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This buds for you. In association with Main Events Monitor, Madison Square Garden and HBO present 12 rounds of boxing for the International Boxing Federation Welterweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission Chairman Mel Southern, First Executive Director Tony Russo, Executive Director Jim Palzanello, Director of Boxing Bob Duffy, Chief Physician at Ringside, Dr. Billy Lathan. Ringside physicians are Dr. Stephen Gelfman, Dr. Richard Estrico, and Dr. Robin Scarlotta. The timekeeper at the bell is Jim Borzell. IBF President at Ringside, Robert W. Lee. IBF Supervisor at Ringside, Bobby Lee Jr. In the ring as special guests, the Mayor of Bayamon, Puerto Rico, Ramon Luis Rivera, and Secretary of Sports of Puerto Rico, Eric Labrador. The three judges scoring this contest on a 10-point must system will be Biba Exton, Melvina Lathan, and Samuel Cande Lopez. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Benji Estevez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden, New York City. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trimmed with white. He weighs 147 pounds. In 1984, he captured Olympic gold, and now as a professional in 43 bouts, he has 40 victories. 17 by knockout, with two losses and one draw. There are many experts who believe, actually, that he has never lost a fight in the ring. And over most of the past decade, he has been considered pound for pound the best there is tonight. He plans to show the world he still is. From Norfolk, Virginia, ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger and former six-time world champion, Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with red. He also weighs 147 pounds. His professional record stands at a perfect 33 bouts, 33 victories, 29 victories by knockout. Tonight, he steps into this ring in the pursuit of greatness, ready to show the world that he, and he alone, is the one to be called pound for pound the very best. Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros de Coupe Alto Puerto Rico, presenting the reigning and defending undefeated IBF welterweight champion of the world, Elix Quito. showdown with Oscar De La Hoya trying to do a better job against Whitaker than De La Hoya did 
trying to look good against a fighter nobody has ever looked good against. And you may have noticed that in a perhaps stilted attempt to balance out the scoring scales here, they appointed one judge from Whitaker's home state of Virginia and another from Trinidad's home province of Puerto Rico. The suggestion is that scoring for the bout lies in the hands of the neutral judge, Melvina Lathan from the state of New York. Felix Trinidad has a long history of getting knocked down in the early rounds. As near as we can figure, he's been down at least a half dozen times, maybe seven, always in the first three rounds of the bout. Always he has gotten up to avenge the knockdowns by knocking out the perpetrator. And Pernell Whitaker is right on top of him, trying to get inside his reach, it appears. And you saw the super quick delivery of the left hook, which is one of the Trinidad trademarks. Trinidad is going to need to keep his jab a bit more active, not allow Pernell Whitaker to get too close. But once he gets close to you, he make himself acquainted with you, and you won't be able to hit him with anything. And Whitaker's job is to make sure he stay close so this guy can hit you on the end of those punches. And De La Hoya fought Bernal Whitaker, April of 1997. He had a hard time making his jab a factor in the fight. Ultimately scratched out a victory with right hand leads and enough power punches to win the approval of the judges. For Trinidad, he has to be careful now. For the first time, he's in with a skillful left hander. Every time you step forward with your jab, he's going to bump it with your foot too. And Trinidad all night will have his feet on top, left foot on top of Whitaker's Pernell's uh, right foot. Right foot. Pernell's right foot. And it's yeah, always and what you watch, George, when a conventional fighter fights a southpaw, the two lead feet. But some fighters don't need to slide forward as uh, Trinidad does. He slides forward, and if he can't find that sliding, he's out of range. Hard right hand inside by Trinidad as they push for position. Whitaker trying to land a left over the top. Whitaker's new head trainer, Tommy Brooks, emphasized in camp, you must make him miss, you must make him pay. You made Delaware you miss, you didn't make him pay enough. Make Trinidad pay more. That's right, you want to get there and take any amount of courage from the younger opponent that you, than you can. Make him want to box, that's where you know you're superior. Make him like to box by hitting him in the side and in the chest. Whitaker flat-footed, attacking, going more to the body than we're used to seeing him. There may be some blood trickling from Trinidad's nose. Uh, Whitaker is using that experience right jab, and he's pointing it. Wherever he points it, he hits. And let me tell you, that can cause a lot of problem on a young opponent. And I'm seeing like blood earlier in the boxing miss. match. Excuse me, George. A hard left hand from Whitaker, just as the bell sounds to end the first round. And Brunel looks to be in excellent fighting shape. If they speak Spanish in Felix Trinidad's corner, as we expect Felix Trinidad's senior will to his son, then our interpreter is Hector Garcia. They were so shocked in Trinidad's corner, they didn't get the stool in for 20 seconds. Don't, don't pay attention to that cut. You're, you're doing real good. Don't get desperate on, the, on, on this fight. Keep your hands up and let him do whatever he wants to do. You keep your pace. Slow down. Just go for it. Hey, listen, that jab is working wonders, man. Okay. See his nose bleeding already? Keep it up, right, keep work. it up. Keep it up. Back there, stay back there for now. CompuBox numbers in round one. Whitaker threw 40 jabs, landed 15 of them. Trinidad, 9 out of 27. All in all, CompuBox has Whitaker outlanding Trinidad 21 to 12 in the first round. And you can see that Harold Letterman saw the round for the man in blue, Sweet P. Whitaker. Let's go. Come on, guys. Come on. Trinidad's corner is going to have to be real cagey and pace a young fighter when you're up against a veteran of this nature. Uh, no punch, 
George, the young fighter has been a champion for more than five years. He yep. should be able to handle anything. Well, youth is youth, and yeah. that, that, that has not anything to do with it. George doesn't veterans, trust him until they get past 40, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> These veterans, they got some tricks that you've never seen before. With a straight right hand lead. Classic technique against the southpaw. Whitaker diving in, pounding Trinidad to the body. And Whitaker so far making it clear that if referee Benji Estevez doesn't stop him from holding, he will. Now, Trinidad was able to get a little effective with his jab. And Whitaker want to make certain that once you get hit with one punch, move the next time. Don't get hit with two shots at a time. Estevez warning Whitaker about a low blow. The two fighters landing mostly one punch at a time. Hard left hand from Trinidad as Whitaker reached with the right. That's what I said earlier. Uh, Whitaker does not need to get hit with two punches at a time because Trinidad, one shot hurts you. Duck and oh. dodge the next time. I got you, I got you. Let's go. Whitaker's totally out from within the head movement now. Keeps his head straight, on, looking at a punch. Hard left hand for Whitaker. Trinidad stunned as Pernell, who is more down on his flat feet than I've ever seen him, gets more punching power from it than we've normally seen from him in the past. As he comes down off his toes, the head movement goes away, George. Well, you know, Whitaker, like I said, you want to duck and dodge after you throw a shot and just before because this guy can hit. Down goes Whitaker on a straight right hand. Trinidad is an extra base hitter, and he hit a clean shot. It's impressive primarily because he's been having so much trouble with Whitaker, and yet he's maintained his poise. He stays right in there, knowing he has the big weapon. Part of the book on fighting a southpaw, George, the right-hand lead, and Trinidad fired it right down the pipe. Come on, let's give it to him. That happened mainly because Whitaker has no head movement. You don't allow a guy to just pipe in just like you got a rifle and aim and shoot like that. Crowd chanting, Tito, 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 Trinidad's nickname. I think really good for Trinidad. You knock a, a veteran down, he tries to pay you back, and then you're sitting in the driver's seat. And now Whitaker stepping up and shortening the distance between himself and Trinidad. Would be a reckless strategy. But Whitaker's trainer, Tommy Brooks, to our mild surprise, said, we're not going for a decision for Sweet Pea. We're going to knock Trinidad out. Whitaker evidently without any footwork trying to get a knockout. It's a more stationary Brunel Whitaker than we've ever seen at any time in his career. A man who has prided himself on the past, in the past, on being unfindable in there. Trinidad is finding him tonight. Once Whitaker starts moving his head here and there, the fight's turn, fight turn into something he can handle. Make your opponent miss. He, he's more effective when he's making his opponent miss. 
Little head movement. No head movement there. Trinidad just popping the jab right onto Whitaker's face. And the right hand lands for Trinidad. Whitaker sticking his jab after landing a left hand in retaliation. Now trying to get to the body and pushing with the right hand. Now, Trinidad is real effective with one shot at a time because he's a puncher. Whitaker's going to have to put together three and four punch combinations. Don't throw one at a time. Make up your mind you're going to throw three and you'll catch him. Again, the right hand lands for Trinidad. Just sticking that right hand lead onto the face of Whitaker, who looks to referee Benji Estevez as, it's to, as if to say, why don't you pull him off of me? more action-packed fight and Whitaker's fight with De La Hoya. Much more. Whitaker feel like he's been physically physically challenged now. This is a macho thing. This guy is going to run all over him if he doesn't fight. He doesn't want to out jab and he wants a knockout. Chopping right hand for Trinidad. Another right hand lands. Whitaker comes back with a left over the top. Backs Trinidad up. Don't pay attention to your cut. You're fine. That's that blood is finished. T just be, be careful with calm and take it easy. Breathe in through, through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. When, you, when you're inside. Hey, listen. Try to time me with the try to time me with the count. I know, I'm trying. Okay? <laughs> but you gotta put them together though, in case you're missing with it. You pick him up with the second or the third shot. Let's go. Can my body be? By CompuBox numbers in round three, it became a slugging match. Trinidad landing 24-48. Whitaker 29 out of 62. But here's the key. Whitaker's previous 20 opponents, including De La Hoya, combined to land 28% of their punches against him. Trinidad is landing 44% so far tonight. And you wonder how long Sweet Pea can withstand that kind of punishment. Harold, how do you have it through three? Jim, two rounds to one, 29-27, Felix Trinidad. You got to give him an extra point for that knockdown in the second round. He's landing the Queen O'Hara shot, so he won rounds two and three. But Jim, I got to tell you, it's illegal to pull Pernell Whitaker's head down. Now, the judges see that. I hope Benji Stevens sees it. Because Trinidad grabs Whitaker behind the neck, pulls his head down constantly. That's illegal. For as long as it goes, I think Benji Estevez is in for a rough night here. Trying to decide when to intervene and when to let it go. Trinidad is having an easier time of it when he steps back a little bit. He's able to slide forward with his jab. It's a little easier stepping back jabbing than going forward because Whitaker cuts him out with his right foot. The sliding the front foot forward is important to Felix's rhythm and his power. Right? He needs that rhythm. Whitaker is showing him, look, I'm going to fight you. I'm not going to be fair. I'm going to fight you mean and rough. That was the first good body punch by Trinidad this time. We were right to the body. And as they get close, Whitaker pounding to the body to try to take some of the mustard out of Trinidad's punches. Trinidad is using a good left jab, but it's all about, I'm going to hit you with a right hand afterwards. Never tried to double up on a good jab. Last few right hands from Trinidad have been pushed just a little bit, landing them, but not with the kind of sit that he had in the first few rounds. The left hook landed there, and another straight right. When a fighter who has won fights by his quickness and cleverness through most of his career matures and gets older, you, you get a chance to see what he's made of. And we're seeing what Pernell Whitaker is made of as he goes right at 
a younger, stronger puncher. Yeah, but this is no time in your life to try to be too courageous. You want to box, hit him, and get out of the way. It's just hard to imagine Brunel Whitaker winning the fight, going right at Felix Trinidad. And this will be ruled a slip. But Trinidad has landed two solid left hooks in the last minute inside against Whitaker. How are you feeling? I'm, I'm okay. You have to be calm, okay? Breathe in. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Stand there. We're gonna we're gonna start fighting right now. Are you feeling okay now? We're gonna go for it now. Keep your hands up. So you gotta throw your punches and step. Either side, it don't matter. Okay? Go to this guy's body, Pete. Go to this guy's body. He's, 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 he's puffing and huffing out there, baby. Here we can see as they get in the clinch as Trinidad holds illegally, according to Harold Letterman, but referee does not take notice. Very forbidding punch stat numbers for Brunel Whitaker in round four. Felix Trinidad landing 25 out of 39 punches, 16 of 26 power shots. Cherry picking in effect against Whitaker. Taking a lot of hard shots. You heard well, Whitaker started a dirty fight. Now it gets a little dirty. He complains. Now this isn't the time to complain. Get back with him. You heard in Trinidad's corner, they're telling him to go and get him. They feel he's just too strong. That Whitaker can't really hurt him. And here he comes. One of the scenarios here was that the younger, stronger man would simply go out and overpower Whitaker and render all of his technique and his skills meaningless. We're on the birds of that, though it isn't quite happening that clearly yet. Hard left hand for Whitaker. Trying to back Trinidad off and force the Puerto Rican fighter to be a little bit more measured in his approach. Well, you tell your fighter to go and get him. I don't know if you want to do it, but at the same time, you don't want to pull him up. You want to keep his confidence. He's been winning a lot of boxing matches in the, in the beginning, so keep telling him to go at it. Renell Whitaker surviving in Felix Trinidad's sights so far. Trinidad is like some viper. Strikes out, step back, steps right back on you. If the strategy is to make Trinidad miss and make him pay, then the first part of the strategy isn't yet working. Purnell is not making him miss. That Trinidad just waits and waits for one right hand. If you make a mistake, always right hand minded. as well, although Trinidad got in a pop on Whitaker's skull as Purnell went down. Left hand for Whitaker, and another. It's plain that Trinidad feels that he's a truck fighting a sedan that he can just walk through Whitaker. Yeah, he's not terribly concerned about what's coming back. He, he has power and he, he believes in this power. All right, George, some of our viewers may look at him and say, well, he's skinny. Where does all the power come from? No, look at the shoulders right around the chest. Conceals it. It's also in the commitment to the punches. And the timing and the leverage and the balance. We're doing great. We're doing great. Breathe in. We're doing great. We're doing great. Breathe in deep. He is dead. He's, but don't take any risk. This guy is dead. He's, he's ready to go. It's only a matter of time. He's ready to go. 
Give us a little bit of water, please. It's just a matter of time. That, that, did he slip before? Or did you hit him? No, I hit him. Just be calm. Relax. Keep those hands up. Keep those hands up and throw that right hand. Go for it, man. Go for it. Go straight for it. Keep those hands up. Let's go. Keep it going. Limpio, limpio. You know, when he was getting knocked down earlier in his career, Jim, he was wide open, throwing reckless punches. Trinidad is a much more controlled fighter now than he was in those days. Ronell Whitaker showing a pretty stiff chin as he takes two vicious right hands from Trinidad. A lot of fighters would have been down right now. Whitaker holding on to the sizzling left hook. This is target practice at this point. Well, but you gotta understand that Whitaker has a few, two or three more tricks up his sleeve. No sleeves on, but he has a trick or two. I'd like to know what they could be, George. Might be a good time to break them out. Anything that you can do that can upset the rhythm of Trinidad, as a veteran, you wanna do that. You know, he said going into the fight, nobody had ever looked good fighting Whitaker. Felix Trinidad looks good fighting Whitaker. That Trinidad comes back with his left hook. He's committed to every shot being a power punch. Straight right hand lands, boom. Winging right hand lands, boom. At this point, Got his eyes right open over the softball. He's able to stand his position. Grinnell firing jabs one at a time, reluctant to try to double up because of Trinidad's left hand. Ate some heavy leather early in this round. Maintained his balance. And now Trinidad slows down as Whitaker lands the left across the top. Yeah, at some point or another, you this fight continues this fashion. You want a patient fighter. He can distribute his power a little later on in the boxing match. You don't want to throw it all that soon. This does not look like a fighter who a few days ago was overweight. Larry, how would you compare the punching power of Felix Trinidad as a 147-pounder with that of, well, before we get to that, Estevez, timeout, low blow, Whitaker gets a chance to recover. All right. Still well, okay? Let's go. You ready? Still no penalty points. How would you compare Trinidad's punching power as a welterweight with that of Tommy Hearns as a welterweight? Hearns was about as big a puncher as I ever saw as a welterweight. But this guy is a, a classic boxer who can knock you, knock you dead and hurt you with both hands with beautiful, beautifully conceived punches. Trinidad believed that his punch and throw was legal. Five seconds, single seconds. And I think what Larry said is that while Hearns' right hand may have been bigger, Trinidad's left is better. That jab in front, the jab in front all the time. He's got nothing left. Everything's okay? Yeah, everything's okay. Here we see Trinidad coming forward. Straight right hand. Whitaker is there, not moving the way you used to see him move. Right now, Whitaker is in a position that he has to stay in there and do some damage. He has to do something dramatic. 
Past the halfway point in the bout. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored through six? Oh boy, I wish I was young. Five rounds to one. 59 54. Felix Tito Trinidad. Jimmy's walking right through him. I tell you, it doesn't make a difference if he gets in front of him, you know, left, right. Makes no difference. He's winning this fight on clean punching, effective aggressiveness. He's just walking forward and whacking uh, Perno Whitaker with those straight rights and the good left jabs. A looping left across the top. And Estevez rules that a slip. That could have been called a knockdown because Trinidad was off balance and was hit a clean shot in the body. Did I'm sure Brunel thought it was a knockdown. Trinidad at this point does not want to give up Pernell Whitaker any confidence in it. You don't want to get him confident. Got up. As though nothing happened, start stalking his opponent some more, Trinidad is. And Whitaker beginning round seven with what amounts to a rally for him. Ducking and slipping a couple of Trinidad's punches and landing a power shot of his own. Whitaker for the moment has succeeded in taking the large Trinidad rooting section out of the fight. Now they try to come back with a chance of Tito, Tito, Tito. Making Trinidad miss and making him pay. Right hand to the body landed. Trinidad is a little wobbly. I think the body shot really hurt him, George. The body shot hurt, but at the same time, this boy is dangerous when he's hurt. Not a good body shot. And Trinidad crouching over to try to protect his body from Whitaker's assault. Whitaker has him coming forward. That's what you want a partner to do is follow you around so that you can land shot as he's picking his feet up. Another left shot for Whitaker. And the right lands inside. A rousing rally in round seven for Sweet Pea. You know that when you have the height advantage, you never want to get down low with your opponent. And that's Trinidad. Whenever he gets a little lower, Whitaker pays off. They trade and Trinidad straight right backs Whitaker up. You want to make sure you maintain your height. Trinidad pausing to wave the right fist at his supporters in the crowd and Whitaker tries to rally again at the end of his biggest round. That you got this thing, dog. You're winning by points. You're winning by points. He has no chance of hurting you. Keep that jab and don't stop that jab. You listen to me? Forget the public. You fight. You do your own fight. You see, this guy's gonna go down anytime now. Go for it. Take a look and see if it was a knockdown. Not really. Later on, clean shots from Whitaker that probably won the round for him, gave him hope of coming on as this fight goes on. But whatever happens, you're seeing the championship heart of a once great prize fighter. And he almost certainly got a point back on the scorecards, but if the date with the canvas early in the round had been ruled a knockdown, then Pete would have gotten two points back. Trinidad going back to the right hand lead and once again he stuffs Whitaker with it. You notice that some of the shots thrown earlier Whitaker was able to land an uppercut on a taller opponent. Trinidad's best advantage is to stay tall. Don't get low for any shots. And at some point Given the fact that his corner is telling him his, he's ahead on the scorecards, you wonder if Trinidad will stop trying to knock Purnell out and box with him using his reach to control the fight. He has no other means. That's all he knows is a knockout. 
Both fighters have been on the canvas more than once, but there's been only one knockdown in the bout. Let's go. The knockdown came in round two when Trinidad deposited Whitaker on the seat of his pants with a straight right hand. Trinidad as though he's inviting Sweet Pea to throw these shots in. Brilliant uppercut. We're now wobbled again. Trinidad steps in to try to finish the match. And the uppercut lands again. Whitaker getting his legs back and fires the left hand. Trinidad going all right hands now. Four more straight right hands and he might knock the man out. Brunel ducking and holding and using his skills to stay alive. I agree. I agree. No punching, no punching. No punching. is thinking, ah, uh, he's hitting me all right, but that doesn't hurt me. Whitaker can feel that he's not hurting. Did you ever think you'd see Brunel Whitaker fighting as though the best defense is a good offense? He's in against something that only comes along every now and then, these Trinidad type fighters. Whitaker trying to match Trinidad, uppercut for uppercut. Trinidad backing Brunel up again with straight right hand power shots. So it was a big rally for Whitaker in round seven. And a big rally for Trinidad in round eight. And another lethal uppercut snaps Whitaker's head back. No, no, no. And Whitaker almost goes to the wrong corner at the end of the round. Relax, relax, Tito. T Tito, he's ready to go. You know what's going on? You don't throw so many hooks. That buckle is loose in that corner. The corner belt. You're straight punches, man. Mm -hmm. Huh? You've been hurt. You hurt this guy, guy before. Come on, Pete. You can do it. Stand up too tall. Come on. Too low. Throw the double jab and step. Throw the double jab and a straight left hand. Right down the right. There is a half hook, half uppercut that days Whitaker momentarily and later in the round Trinidad puts an exclamation point on it this is a better fight than the one we saw last week in that round Trinidad landed 25 of 44 power shots let's see if he has softened Whitaker up for a possible finish or if there's another big rally left in the 35 year old Hall of Fame fighter you know what? Trinidad's corner told him to stay away from so many left hooks. And he went right off and doubling up on straight right hands. And that corner evidently knows exactly what they're telling him. And Hector Garcia, our Spanish interpreter, just informed us that Felix Trinidad's father told him between rounds, you're ahead by five points. Don't do anything foolish. I think he'd be doing something foolish if he tried to coast in. Well, I think I think George made the point. He only knows one way to fight. Well, which is the best way. You said to make the fight yourself. Don't back up. You've been training. You've trained the way you fight anyway. Keep going. But also, let's remember the purpose in this fight. To make his case for a fight with De La Hoya, to try to be impressive, to achieve some parity. And he is certainly handling a Whitaker better than De La Hoya did, although let's remember this is a two-year-older Whitaker than De La Hoya faced. Well, that's exactly the point. There'll be a lot of material here for the De La Hoya skeptics who will say that Trinidad created considerably more combustion against Brunel than Oscar was able to do, but how does this Brunel compare to the Brunel of April 7, 1997? Or April 12, 1997? I think he's a whole different guy. I think this Trinidad is something altogether different here. <laughs> you haven't seen a guy with that many loaded up right hands. Shoots him like a guy with a pistol. And no matter what you do to him, it doesn't discourage you. I think we better get ready to, to follow Trinidad around for a while. Good body shot by Pernell Whitaker. 
another, another great body, great shot. body shot. When Grinnell has landed to the body, he's turned things in his favor. That's what happened back in round seven. Trinidad missing with the left hook. Whitaker, who's probably taken more big power shots in this fight than in any other fight in his career, gets hit with the right hand again. These are two thoroughbreds going at it. Boy, can you can you just imagine what Cornell Whitaker at his age is going through oh, no. to fight this young stud? And what a great brace of fights back to back in the welterweight division to signal the fact that top flight competition with fighters risking themselves against great opponents is back in boxing. There's a cut over the right eye of Whitaker. Whitaker's cut man is the excellent Stay Joe right there, Souza. Right That's his right hand right there, with the rubber glove on okay, going to work. More, Stay right there, get the stuff from here. Hey, get listen. Both okay. hands right down the pipe, baby. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now I'm clean. Come on. Go come ahead. Come on. Come on. Come on. Nice and clean. Yo, both yeah, hands right down the pipe. Uh, uh, yeah. Both hands right down the pipe. Yeah, I got it. Like you were working just there. Keep showing him a jab step. Keep showing him a jab step. Okay. Then drop the left hand. Right right there. Okay? Yeah. Hey, look. All right. Them body shots is on money, man. But you got to throw them, though. You know what I'm saying? Here's some of the body shots. Whitaker can hurt you with a body Let's shot. Let's go. But as I watch him in the corner during this replay, I don't think I can recall seeing him almost admitting that he's in with a better fighter tonight in his facial mannerism. You know, another thing, I don't think you've seen Pernell Whitaker or any welterweight in, a, in the ring with a fighter like this Trinidad. This boy's like a snake. And the first nine rounds have been for men only. Letterman, how did you score him? Jim, let me tell you, after nine rounds, I think Pernell Whitaker's out of rounds. He's gonna knock him out to win. 88, 82, seven rounds to two. A big six-point lead for Felix Tito Trinidad. Jim, effective aggressiveness, clean punching. That's the story of the fight. That's all you gotta know. I mean, we score on four points, the other points being, you know, defense. You know, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about ring generals. It's just that aggressiveness of Tito Trinidad coming forward. And the clean right hands and the clean left hooks is walking right through him. I was Whitaker Corner. I tell him, look, show the world you're the best boxer around. You have nothing to prove. Things can happen when you start boxing good. Even a punch, you may land something to knock him down. George, you don't get to be as good as Pernell Whitaker without trying to win the fight. Yeah, but I meant he's not winning trying to be flat-footed trading shots with this big boy. He's, but he doesn't have enough time to win the fight the other yeah, way. Yeah, but if you start boxing, other things open up for you. He's going to have to get to the body. That's what's worked for him. He's going to have to find a way to Tito Trinidad's ribcage. And unfortunately, getting there means going through a hail of Trinidad artillery. Loses his balance. It's been a slippage fight. Good right, left hand by Whitaker this time. Like I said, make this big puncher follow you. Every time he comes forward, he has to lift up one foot at a time. Catch him as he lifts him up. Straight left hand for Trinidad. Drives Whitaker into the ropes. Left hand to the body by Trinidad. Whitaker parrying with his jab and trying to pound with the left hand. Whitaker cornered now, sits down on his butt. Estevez won't throw the knockdown. Okay, come on. Seems like all the snap is going out of Whitaker's shots now. When you're not getting it done upstairs and you've done damage to the rib cage, that's the time to remember to go back to the body. Pernell Whitaker in this round didn't throw a single effective body shot.
with calm. Keep those hands up. We're doing great. You're winning this fight. You win it. Don't take any risk. And now keep him at a mid distance because we're ahead. Don't let him hit you. Are you listening to me? You gotta go get him, baby. You gotta go get him. Everything you got, everything you got, you gotta go get him now. All right? Make it a dog fight now, Cat. Two rounds. You got two rounds to make it a dog fight. This replay will show you that Whitaker indeed, in order to get away from that roundhouse right hand, sat down on his own. You heard in Whitaker's corner, it's a dog fight, you gotta go out and get him. But in round 10, Felix Trinidad picking his shots, landed 23 of 34 punches. He's gonna wind up the fight, landing more than half his punches against a guy who throughout his career has been invisible to most of his opponents. Trinidad's corner has told him to coast. That's not smart, you don't wanna slow the train down here. And Whitaker now remembers to go back to the body, pounding hard there twice with the left hand. Got to tell Trinidad to keep doing what you're doing. Don't try to coast in for a decision. You could have done pretty well in the sports books in Vegas, betting that both Deloia Quarte and Whitaker Trinidad would go the distance. But right now, it appears entirely likely. Trinidad is keeping his distance real good. He jabs right hand, but he doesn't move in. He keeps his balance. Hand for Whitaker momentarily backs Trinidad up. And add to all of the other Trinidad assets a chin which has gotten better as this fight has gone on. <laughs> Still no penalty for low blows. Well, the referee's been watching these low blows by each guy round after round, so he's not going to get in there now. It wasn't that low. Whitaker's able to land one twos in this round. Because right. Dad left across the top. Trinidad's corner made a mistake. They told him to coast. You slow down the train, and it just doesn't have the power there. Yeah, but if he can avoid a knockdown, George, or a knockout, he's won the fight. So he can give up these rounds as one-point rounds. Because even if Purnell wins this round, it's hard to find a round other than the first and the seventh that he might have won. You just want to keep this locomotive going. Keep him throwing. But the other issue here, guys, is Trinidad has to look good. He wants to make his case for De La Hoya. I think he's already made it. Maybe he could even make it more dramatically and convincingly. That was not a low blow. That was right on the border. Whitaker doing his best to make Estevez believe it was a low blow. Estevez was correct. No. Ah, Trinidad just missed with a home run swing with the right hand. I think that Trinidad should finish this fight trying to get a knockout. Forget about this point, Colston. Forget about any other fighters. Get out there and get yourself a knockout. Quick little right hand counter inside by Whitaker. Snapped Trinidad on the chin, but they'll go to the 12. This is it. We're winning a wide margin. Breathe in, breathe in. We're winning this fight. Hey, baby. This is your career, man. We gotta go get it. You did it before, baby. You did it before. You can do it again. You can do it again. Come on, baby. Don't, don't hit him back. You'll, just keep your hands up and relax. Are you listening to me? This is the last round. Just get ready. I don't want you to get hit. Hands up. One final tribute to the brave warrior, Brunel Whitaker. In round 11, he threw 81 punches, doing everything within his power to try to reverse the seemingly irreversible momentum of this fight.
But Whitaker loves to say, victimized by close controversial decisions against Jose Luis Ramirez and Oscar De La Hoya, that he's never lost a professional prize fight. It's hard to imagine him winning this one by anything short of a dramatic, career-changing knockout. Sometimes you're in a fight like that and you got to say to yourself, what do I go home for? Do I go home without any more scars? For what reason? Do I take a chance? For good reason. That's what you got to do. Take a chance, Whitaker. Hard left hook by Trinidad. Whitaker steps back and fires his own left. Rennell. Green's finding with the right jab, trying to find a way to land one more big left hand. Straight right hand has been such a powerful piece of weaponry for Trinidad all night long. It's been a fast-paced fight most of the way. You could understand both fighters being a little tired in the 12th. But if Brunel Whitaker is going to score a dramatic knockout, it's hard to imagine him doing it any other way than to launch a vicious, sustained assault to the body of Felix Trinidad. On the few occasions in the fight when he's hurt Trinidad, he seemingly did so by hurting him to the body. He's looking upstairs here, and he's not getting much reward for his efforts. It seems that Trinidad is all about 100% nothing else. When he slacks up one inch, just doesn't have it. So we're narrowing it Go down in the welterweight division. Forte tried against De La Hoya. De La Hoya was more man in the 12th. Whitaker's trying to reduce one last stand against Trinidad, but it looks like all Trinidad. Somewhere down the road, a reckoning for the two young welterweight stars, or so we most fervently hope. There is no doubt that Trinidad has made his case by looking better against Whitaker than De La Hoya did. He is a more natural boxer and two-handed puncher, which does not mean he would beat De La Hoya in a fight between them. Rennell Whitaker showing his bravery in a rough physical fight, but taking the toughest pounding of his career. And as Whitaker sits down again to avoid Trinidad's punches, the crowd calls for a knockout. Estevez pulls them apart. Ten more seconds to go. The two big welterweight dramas in the desert and in the garden both go the distance. Trinidad winning nine rounds to three. Thought he looked terrific. He is an outstanding fighter. <laughs> CompuBox numbers give Whitaker credit for landing only six punches in the 12th round, as mostly he swung away with the left hand, hoping to land something big. He never went about the systematic body assault that I felt would have been his only chance. Highlights of the bout, we told you about Felix Trinidad's penchant for revenge. When he's been knocked down in the past, he's always gotten up to knock out the perpetrator. Well, in this fight, Bernal Whitaker won the first round, or at least appeared to, and so therefore, Trinidad came out in round two and established the tempo for the bout by punching Purnell Whitaker to the canvas with a straight right hand. And from there, Trinidad stayed in control until Whitaker came out and mounted a big rally, mostly with body punches, to win round seven. So immediately after that in round eight, Trinidad came back with that big uppercut, the left hook and straight right hand there, and generally batted Whitaker around the ring throughout the eighth round. Brunel Whitaker is a guy who's made every fighter he's ever faced look bad. I mean, he's a guy who could make Michelle Pfeiffer look bad. He couldn't make Felix Trinidad look bad. Indeed. Harold Letterman, what about your final scorecard? 117, 110.
Nine rounds to three. Felix Trinidad, an absolute no-brainer, Jim. Just walked right through him, scored with the right hand, scored with the left hooks. It was very easy for Felix Trinidad. Effective aggressiveness once again, and clean punching with the two key points. And remember, one judge from Brunel Whitaker's home state of Virginia, one from Puerto Rico, one from New York. Newlywed Michael Buffer got married last Thursday and has our congratulations. Here Ladies he is. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Madison Square Garden, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Melvina Lathan scores the belt 118 to 109. That's the same score from Biba Exton, 118 to 109. Samuel Conde Lopez scores the bout 117 to 110 for the winner by unanimous decision and still RBF welterweight champion of the world Felix Tito Trinidad Honest scoring Creditable judging. In a round of applause, Trinidad please, with a big victory in a fight much more entertaining than some of us might have suspected. A rousing performance by the Puerto Rican star as he establishes himself as De La Hoya's foil in the welterweight division. Final punch down.